Hey there folks, this is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey Mini Tutorial number 10. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the get key state command in Auto Hotkey. Um, with this command there's two basic ways that we can declare it or use it. Uh, the first method is going to give us a value that is going to be a literal u for up or d for down. And unlike my previous tutorials or mini tutorials or any other thing like that, um, because there's a lot to cover on this and I want to keep it in the mini tutorial category, I've actually gone ahead and written everything out. But because I don't want your eyes to focus on things that aren't important in the moment, what I've done is created a lot of white space. So that way we're only going to focus on one thing at a time. Okay, so I have here, I set up a hotkey for the number pad 1. And then we have our command. So we just type in get key state and then a comma. And then the next parameter that we're going to put into it is our variable that we're going to store the return value. Next we're going to check the key that we actually, or button in this case, that we actually want to detect its state. So here I have L button for the left mouse button and I'm going to leave a link in the description to the documentation page where it'll tell you the names of all the buttons so if you want to know how to evaluate uh, this button or that button it'll tell you what the what you type in here next there is a, another parameter and this is P for the physical state and T for a toggled state. So the toggled is for things like caps lock, numbers lock, etc. The P is for the physical state and for the most part 99% of the time you can just admit it and it'll work exactly the same. If you do come across the odd time where you type in something here and it's not working what you're gonna have to do is go to the documentation page and read through because I can't cover this tutorial will be much too long if I go into that so for the most part you can just completely omit the P and we're just going to use either no parameter or we're going to use the toggle parameter next we have an, a message box to display the value that we've stored into our variable so I'm going to go ahead and save and run this and I'm going to hit the number pad one with the leftmost button not being pressed and we get a value of u stored in our variable for up and now I'm going to run it again this time I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and press number pad 1 and we get a value of d stored in our variable so that's the literal method the next method is using a built-in auto hotkey function and what we get back this time is a boolean value of a 0 or a 1 or a true or a false in other words so I'm just gonna uncomment this and personally this is the way that I prefer to use this I don't really care for the the D or the U okay so once again we're using number pad 1 as our hotkey this time what we do is we create our output variable and we're going to say it's the equal to the return value from this function. So this is a, a auto hotkey built-in function, so we don't have to create it. It's already created. It's built into the code. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass it some parameters. Now, because our our the the key that we want to get, because we're using it's going to be stored in another variable inside. Like we're just using a string. So what we need to do is in this case enclose it in quotation marks. If we were using a variable instead, so let's say we were storing a key into a variable, so let me do that same key. If instead of passing the string into our function, what we could do is get rid of these and just type in our variable because we're expecting an expression here so we wouldn't have to do anything else we just type in VAR we wouldn't need the quotes and in this case here we're gonna take a look at the toggled state so 
because the caps lock we don't actually care if the caps lock is being pressed down or if it's up because that isn't really going to determine whether the caps lock toggle is on like we could be pressing down on the caps lock button but it could be turned off and we could be it could be in its up position where we're not pressing it down and it could be off or rather it could be on okay so this is our toggle this is where we use the toggle and once again because we're passing the string or a little literal character into our function we need to put quotation marks around it we have our output variable in a message box and we'll run it so I'm gonna have caps lock is turned off right now I'm gonna hit number pad one and we should get a return value of zero because it's off or false and now I'm going to turn caps lock on and I'm going to run it again and this time we should get a return value of 1. Okay. So that's the second way and like I said this is my preferred method. I prefer working with those ones or zeros rather than the U and D. Next what we're going to look at is those same two methods but this time using them with conditionals or if statements. So I'll just comment this. I mean, I'll get rid of the comments. And I have a feeling that this tutorial is going to run a little bit. I, I really like to keep these mini tutorials under 10 minutes. It's an arbitrary amount of time that I've set for myself, but uh, whatever. I might have to make this a full length tutorial. Okay, here again we have our number pad 1 set up as our hotkey. We're going to be using the initial way where we're getting back a D or a U. So the literal, we're going to get it back a literal key state. We have our output variable and then the key name. The first example, we're going to use the if statement with the expression. So in this case here, because we have our parentheses, we were expecting expressions inside of these parentheses. So with our D, we need to make sure that it is wrapped in quotes. And then we'll have a message box outputting our variable. The second way we're going to look at is where it's going to evaluate, but this time we're not expecting an expression, so we do not have to use quotation marks. And in this case, we're going to say if it does not equal D. So this one is if it does equal D, if this one, this one is if it does not equal D. Okay, I'm going to save, run. And we're checking our left mouse button. So I'm going to press number pad 1 without holding down the left mouse button. And we get our first message box. So it is not D. So we execute it this message box here. It says the left mouse button is up. The value of output var is U for up. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the left mouse button. And I'm going to press number pad 1 again and this time we get that it is not up and it has a value of D. So that's the first way, the literal way, the literal method and with expressions and now we're gonna look at using the boolean method using the built-in function with conditionals. So once again, our hotkey is number pad 1. We have our output variable equaling the return value from our get key state function, and we're passing in the left mouse button, and we're checking its physical state. Like I said, most of the time you can omit this, but we're going to use it just to, as an example. Um, our first if statement is going to... Uh, <clears throat> we're going to be using expressions, but because we can use numbers or integers or values like that as an expression in here. We do not need to do anything special with it. We don't need any quotation marks. We can also do, because we're doing the Boolean values, we can also use true or false if it's a zero. Okay, but we're just going to do the one or zero. So if our output variable equals 1 so in other words if we're pressing down on our key on our, our mouse button then we're gonna get this message message box the other way we're gonna look at it is 
with where we're not expecting an expression and this time we're going to check if it does not equal true. So in other words, the mouse button is up. I'm going to press with the mouse button up. I'm going to press the number pad one and we get that it is up. So our this statement ended up being true. So we executed this message box and now I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and press the number pad one and it says that the left mouse button is down because this one evaluate it to be true. And one last thing. This time I'm combining a bunch of different things. So we're going to combine using checking multiple key states inside of a loop. And we're going to have counting variables and a bunch of other things. Okay. This here I do not need. Okay. So before we enter into our loop, I've created the variable i and I've set its value to be 0. And then we're going to enter into a loop and it's going to initialize a tooltip that we're going to display a bunch of different values. So we're going to say that output variable, we're going to check the value of output variable constantly, 1. Output variable 2, we're going to check its value constantly. And we're also going to check the value of i constantly. Then I've said that output variable is equal to the return value from our get key state function of the leftmost button, and output variable two is equal to the return value of our get key state function with the R button or the rightmost button. Then we're going to go and check evaluate to see if we have these conditions met. So the first one, if our output variable 1 equals true, or in other words, if we're holding down the leftmost button, the value of i is going to get added 1 to it. Else if output variable equals 0, so if we're not holding it down, it's going to subtract from the value of i. And lastly, if the value of output variable 2, which is our rightmost button, if it equals true, it's going to turn off the tooltip pop up a message box saying that we're about to exit and then it'll jump outside of the loop and outside of our hotkey. So I'll go ahead and run it and to begin with I'm not going to be holding down the mouse button and we'll have a look. So the first line shows the value of our output variable 1 which is our left mouse button. So I'm going to hold it down and it changes to 1. I let it go and it turns to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, I look at the i value at the very bottom. If I'm holding it down, i gets its value incremented up. If I release it, it subtracts one from it each time. And then lastly, if I press the right mouse button, we get our message box saying it's about to exit. Okay, that's it for this one. Um, we're at 13 and a half minutes almost. Uh, so a little bit long, but uh, like I said, this is that's why I had to do it like this rather than typing it all out. Uh, I will see you on the next one. And